Abigail and Sir Stuart have elite palates and perfect taste, much better than yours. Learn about the fine nuances of finer wine on Invigorating. Soft like a kitten's loin. Oh, it's as silken as the hem of a geisha's robe. Jammier than Frodo's feet. Softer than a unicorn's mane. Oh, more vulgar than Easy E's out. Oh, hell no. We're Stevie and Josiah. A girl and a guy who happen to know a lot about <laughs> drinking. That's because we drink a lot. But we also study a lot and work a lot. We've worked at some of the best restaurants and wine shops from coast to coast. But at the end of the day, we're still just two everyday people who are thirsty. Really thirsty. We hope you are too. We're here in uh, beautiful Napa Valley uh, with Michael, Rob, and Davis. Uh, so what is it that you guys do here? We're what we call sustainable beekeepers, meaning we're um, looking closely at how bees are doing, especially bees that are indigenous of Napa Valley, local bees, and we're um, trying to solve some of the problems we're seeing locally. So we're sustainable beekeepers here at Conley Ranch. Conley Ranch is a 13 acre property uh, right in downtown Napa. Our goal in the world is to spread the love of uh, sustainable farm and garden education. You're talking about that you do sustainable beekeeping. Like, I mean, you hear that term thrown around in, in wine a lot. So what does that mean uh, to beekeeping, being a sustainable beekeeper? What it means to us is looking very closely at our own local bees bees that have acclimated to the Napa Valley. All these boxes have a very specific genetic stock in them. Everyone's labeled, they have a little label on them, a metal label, and um, we're rearing the best possible genetics we can here in Napa. Why don't we have a look? Here we go. What we're doing, we're collecting this stuff, which is propolis. Propolis is a product from the hive that the bees bring that acts as their glue. It's really super sticky. And the bees collect this from sap trees. So what we're doing is scraping all this off because we keep this stuff. It has incredible antibacterial qualities. We're always scorching our tools, scorching everything. It's really how you sanitize things before you start oh, using okay. it. Right. So sanitation is important. Oh, it's huge. We would never go into a um, jump from one hive to another or put something from one hive into another without sanitizing it first. Because if one of the bees from the one hive has some kind of infection, you could spread it to all the other ones. Yes, it mostly has to do with pathogens and things. Disease, pests. So we're always squirting up everything. Then we'll, I'll put the tray in place. But what happens is all the debris and everything from the hive falls down on this tray. And you could read that tray with a little understanding and know-how of bee biology, you can read that tray like a book. There's all these clues that tell you about what's going on with the bees. So there's very few little bees in here. But this is just a colony that's just starting, right? Look at all those bees. These bees came out of a Mexican market. I'm looking for the queen. There's a lot of bees here, but I don't see her right away. She's much bigger, her abdomen's much bigger. This, is, I know, is a little young queen. She hasn't even been mated yet, so she's not a whole lot different. That's why I'm having a hard time finding her. I feel like I'm playing Where's Waldo. Is it is. Her? Nope, you could be on oh, this is that ring. Her? That's her. Look at you go. Hey. Look how gorgeous she is. So I'm just going to smash this down. Slide it up in this space. A little groove in here. I want to be careful because my queen's on this frame, but you can see this groove. Just push this thing up in this groove. That's all we gotta do. And we'll come back a little bit later and they'll be have built out on this. So that's you're almost kinda just building like a it's almost like a little apartment for them and then they all move in and, yes. and start thriving. Yep. And then I'm gonna take them out of this box. Yeah, these bees are kinda like George and Wheezy right now, man. They're moving on up. <laughs> so we have these boards that we're putting in here. And these kind of separate off these bees so they don't get all crazy and build willy-nilly. Okay. This is saying like build with inside these two follower boards. And it's nice because now we could wait till they fill up this part of that frame and then open those up and then put another frame in there, an empty frame with some of that wax up on. See how that worked? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> she was all up in my beard. Nice. Um, you know, we could expand this colony and oh, see, once they, um, 
once they get that smell on my, now uh, she's released an alarm pheromone on my mouth. And then all the other bees can smell it, so they'll come down and they'll start circling around you. What do you do if you get stung? You get the stinger out as quickly as you can. Then you smoke yourself, right? right? It masks that pheromone, then you stick your hand back over the hive, 10 more don't jump on you and sting you. I hear that your wife uh, is actually coming out with a really cool book uh, based on like recipes and stuff using honey. Yeah, my wife's a photographer and photographed um, a book about honey and pairing honey, different honeys with different recipes. So um, we're gonna go down there and try some of these cool. recipes. So now that we got all this honey, let's see if Stevie can pair some wines to go with it. Honey desserts remind me of the honey badger. And the nasty ass honey badger reminds me of honey boo boo child. And honey boo boo reminds me of my special juice is gonna help me win. Well, I'm going to introduce you to a special grown up go go juice with go go gorgeous honey notes that'll help you win at dessert and that any grown up beauty queen will love. The wine comes courtesy of one of the craziest concepts in all of wine. It's called botrytis. Now, botrytis is a mold that attacks grapes in humid conditions. It sounds pretty bad, right? Well, it is, sometimes. See, botrytis actually attacks grapes in two forms. We call the first bad, nasty-ass one gray rot, do not want. And we call the fabulous, mystical one noble rot, want very much. Noble rot shrivels the grapes up, making them look terrible, but making them taste delicious. See, as noble rot shrivels the grapes, it actually concentrates their sugars, making them taste sweeter, and somehow imbuing them with these fabulous exotic spice and saffron, and yes, honey notes. Now, press these grapes into juice, and you have the makings for a gorgeous dessert wine that, as you can guess, pairs exceptionally well with honey desserts, or foie gras or cheese, or pageants. Possibly the most classic dessert wine that's affected by noble rot is called Sauternes. It's named after the village of Sauternes, which is in Bordeaux, France. It sits at the crux of two rivers that combine to create humid conditions that affect the vineyards there. So, Botrytis attacks the grapes in this humidity, shrivels the grapes, and gives us wines that make you go, mmm. Sauternes is pretty special. And while it can also be pretty pricey, remember that this kind of vineyard management and delicate winemaking require very careful attention. It turns out top of the line quality worthy of a special occasion. Now, being in Northern California, we like to drink local, and we just so happen to be privy to a killer local wine made by the same botrytis affected grapes grown near the Napa River. It's made into a honeylicious wine by one of the coolest dudes in the industry. But Travis make me holla honey boo boo. All right, sweetness. So this is our first wine, 1998 Chateau Clement Sauternes. So as Stevie just talked about, there's three grapes that can go into Sauternes. Sauvignon Blanc, Muscadel, and Semillon. This wine's unique because it's 100% Semillon. Another cool thing about it is it has a little bit of age on it. 1998, this little honey cougar should be drinking perfectly right now. And our next little sweetie, 2010 Oro Puro Sauvignon Blanc Semillon coming from the southern part of the Silverado Trail in Napa Valley. So the cool thing about this is it's made by our friend and Napa Valley's 10th yeah. member of the Wu-Tang Clan, Mr. Abe Schroner. It's also really unique because it has that special type of fungus that Stevie just talked about. Say it with me now, Bo Tri Tis.